The problem is, regardless of who wins, the problems are going to get worse. The budget deficits are going to get bigger. The trade deficits are going to get bigger. And we're going to have a crisis. We've been kicking the can down the road since Greenspan. But eventually, we're going to run out of road here. And we're going to see a dollar and sovereign debt crisis. And I think that's what the gold market is telling you. Gold prices are rising like this as a warning sign. It's unfortunate that it's being ignored, but I think it's a harbinger of a much worse crisis than what we had in 2008 or what we went through with COVID. This is going to be the final crisis, which is, again, a U.S. dollar. And you have a debt crisis where it's not just the mortgage market that's in trouble. It's U.S. treasuries were, you know, crisis. Silver is very cheap. I think Silver's, silver is, you know, $33, $34 an ounce. It's still well below its highs from 2011 and even 1980. Silver got to $50 in 1980. Investors are ignoring it. I mean, most investors are ignoring gold. The reason that gold is almost 2800 is because central banks are buying it. Most Americans are selling gold, even had gold to start with. And the media doesn't even cover what's happening in gold. They will. I don't know how much higher the price is going to have to be. You know, I recently dug up a clip. I posted it on X when I was on CNBC in 2004 or so. I'm talking with Mark Haynes, but I'm talking about gold and it's like $490 an ounce. And I mentioned gold $60 an ounce higher than it was about six months ago. And his response was, who cares about the price of gold? Why should I care about the price of gold? It's, you know, and now it's almost 2,800 and they still don't care about the price of gold. But for one reason, they care about the price of Bitcoin, which is irrelevant of it, but they spend all their time covering Bitcoin and no time covering gold. I think the smart money is. There's just not much smart money around. I mean, my money's there. I think I'm smart. But I mean, there are some people too that are in gold. I was listening to an interview with Ray Dalio today. And of course, he's got a lot of gold. And a lot of other people that seem to understand the fundamentals of the problem also own gold. But we're a small minority when you look at the overall investing community. But I guess they, they don't understand. They have a lot of confidence in the Fed and other central bankers. They don't even really understand inflation or what it is. They don't know much about money and they mainly just follow trends or momentum. Mm -hmm. So they're too fixated on the themes in the NASDAQ and AI or whatever is just going up to even pay attention to gold. They think that people who are buying it are you know, just gloom and doomers and it's irrelevant. But they're going to be surprised, just like they were surprised by the 2008 financial crisis, which was something that they should have seen coming from a mile away. It was obvious that it was coming. I warned about it for years. And again, those warnings fell on deaf ears. And then when the crisis hit, everybody acted like it was impossible to see it coming. The next crisis, again, is going to be worse. But I think you're going to see a much bigger rise in the future. It's going to include silver and it's going to include the gold and silver mining stocks. You know, I just was looking today, the combined market cap of all the gold mining stocks in the world is only about $400 billion. You know, there are plenty of individual stocks mm -hmm. that have a market cap of more than $400 billion. I looked at the MicroStrategy, which basically produces nothing, and it just leverages Bitcoin, it has a bigger market cap than all the mining stocks in the world, except for Newmont. And Newmont is barely ahead of it. It was like, it was about 5% greater market cap for Newmont mining than for MicroStrategy. You know, Newmont Mining came out with the biggest quarterly profit last week in five years, reiterated that they're on track to have the biggest year of gains in their 100-year history of profits, reiterated that, you know, the full year, but they missed on the quarter by just under 7% because there was an unexpected spike in costs. A lot of it was labor costs down in Australia, some other costs, and they thought it was kind of a one-quarter event. They didn't expect that high a cost in the current quarter, yet the stock tanked by 20%. I mean, a ridiculous reaction to a good earnings report that just right. wasn't as good as had been expected. But it's not like, you know, they were priced for perfection. You know, the stock is at a PE of 15 on trailing earnings, which is a 50% discount to the S&P. It's the only gold stock in the S&P. And it's trading at a 50% discount to, to the index, even though it's growing its earnings faster than the rest of the S&P. When people want to blame oil, 
for inflation. They don't realize that we're actually getting a break on oil. Oil is historically cheap. If you price oil in gold, how many barrels of oil can you buy with just one ounce of gold? Oil has never been this cheap. The only time it was early COVID when oil collapsed, you know, in the beginning of the, the shutdown of the economy. But if you throw out that month or so in, under a normal circumstance, we've never had oil as cheap as it is right now. Even 50 years ago, 100, whatever, it was never this cheap. So we're getting a huge break. But that also tells you that oil is not going to stay at this price. Gold being at 2800 tells you that oil is not going to stay you know, below $100 a barrel and we're still below 70 It's not going to stay below 70 or even below 100 for long. Gold is a leading indicator of where the price of oil is headed. But in the meantime, it's great for the gold mining companies that need a lot of oil to mine gold. So, you know, but this should be helping these stocks. But nobody seems to care. I think there's an explosive opportunity here where people are paying attention to the Nasdaq. You know, they're forgetting about what's going on in gold. They made the same mistake in 1999, 2000, when everyone was buying dot-com stocks and gold was under $300. And the gold mining stocks were ridiculously cheap. And then the bubble burst and gold went from 300 to 1900 And you got a lot of 5, 10x moves in the gold mining stocks. I think this is going to be an even bigger move. I think we'll make more than 10 times our money in gold stocks. And right now, this we're on track. 2024, the biggest gain in gold since 1979. That's how rare a move this big is in one year, and nobody is covering it. But the big difference is 1979, that was kind of the end of the move, right? Gold peaked in 1980, and it went from $35 an ounce to 850 And there were gold stocks that went up 50x, you know, during the 70s. But this, I think, is early on. We just started this bull market. This is the first year, because we had the first leg, right? We had a bull market from 2001 to 2011, right? That's when gold went from 270 to 1900. Then we entered into a bear market consolidation where gold went from 1900 down to 1000 and then back up to 15, 1600, traded sideways, got back up to 2000, back down. But really from 2011 through the end of 2023, early 2024, gold went sideways. But what it did was form a huge base. And the resistance was around 2000. And we didn't really break out of that until this year. So we just basically left the launch pad. And now we're at almost 2800. But I think this move is going to be at a minimum proportionate to the move that preceded it. So gold went up about sixfold to go from 300 to 1900. So this move should be at least sixfold, which is 2000 to 12,000. So kind of at a minimum, you think gold is going to go to 12,000. But I don't know why it would stop there. I think it's going a lot higher than that. It's not that gold's going anywhere. They're going to print a ton of dollars. We've got massive deficits in the United States. We're running about a trillion dollars every four or five months of debt. So we're adding like three to four trillion a year to the national debt. Interest is now $1.1 trillion a year. It's the second biggest line item in the budget behind Social Security. Probably by the end of next year, we'll be paying more in interest on the debt than we're paying in Social Security. And where's all the money going to come from to pay that interest as well as fund the operating deficits? They're just going to print it. And so the dollar is going to get killed and the price of everything is going to go up. If you thought we had bad inflation uh, last year, wait till you see what's coming. And it doesn't even matter who wins the White House. Inflation is going much, much higher. And the gold market is eventually going to figure this out. And then, you know, gold is going to even outpace inflation because people are going to be looking for an inflation hedge. They're going to see this freight train coming and they're going to try to get out of the way and they're going to try to protect their purchasing power. And they'll do that by buying gold. What you're really seeing is what's really happen into assets. For example, when this century started in 2001, the Dow was around 10,000. Gold was just around 300. And gold has gone up more than eight times, whereas the Dow has only gone up a little over four times. So that's telling you that the Dow didn't even go up. The Dow has lost about 50% of its value over the last 24 years. That's what gold is telling you. See, when yep. we're pricing the Dow in dollars, the dollar has lost a lot of value. And so that gives you a false sense of what your wealth is because it's like you're measuring your wealth with smaller dollars. It's like I'm just under six feet tall, but that's measuring me with a 12 inch ruler. 
What if I measured myself with a 10 inch ruler, right? Can I play in the NBA? I'm not gonna be seven feet tall just because I shrink the ruler. So when you measure the price of stocks using gold, you take that away. What's really happening to stocks? Well, gold tells you that stocks are going down. So Americans, they're not getting richer, they're getting poor. And especially look at your salary. People wanna know why they're struggling to pay the rent, put food on the table, save for their retirement, why they're mired in debt. Look at your wages in terms of gold. How much gold is the typical American earning today versus how many ounces of gold they may have earned a few years ago? So the value of your wages is collapsing. And you're seeing that obviously when you go to the supermarket, anything you want to buy costs a lot more. Of course, if you were getting your wages in gold, you know, you'd be fine. They just concluded that BRICS summit in Russia, and they didn't announce any kind of deal to form a new currency. But what they did make clear is that they're moving away from the dollar to the extent that they can. So they're going to try to trade with one another bilaterally in their own currency. And that's why you're seeing what's happening with gold, because that's what they're doing. They are slowly replacing their dollar reserves with gold reserves. And that trend is going to continue. It's just getting started. And, you know, that's the main reason that the price of gold, I think, is rising, but you're not seeing, you know, silver rising because they're not buying silver. They don't have the capacity to store that. So they're just buying gold and they're not buying gold mining stocks either. They're just buying the actual gold. And while investors who would be buying those other metals are still clueless about what's happening. But imagine how much faster the price of gold is going to go up when the central bankers have to compete with private investors who are right now not even in the market or when western central banks because the u.s hasn't bought any gold right they're not buying gold in the uk or germany or france you know it's the east that's buying the gold it's the emerging markets look poland poland now has more gold than the united kingdom what happens when the west wakes up to what the east is doing and realizes that they need more gold i mean the america doesn't want to buy gold because it wants people using the dollar but look at all these sovereign wealth funds that are loading up, you know, in Switzerland or Norway, they're loading up on tech stocks. They own micro strategy too. They should be buying gold mining stocks or physical gold. You know, eventually they're going to do that, but they haven't been doing it.